right. Hello, hello. Um, this is gonna be the Animal Crossing video. I'm gonna give a few minutes for people to get on and me to get my paints on my plate. going to be using a bit of color here. Uh, what we're going to do is white, yellow, blue, red, black for sure, uh, green if you have it, brown if you have it. If not, no worries. We can make brown, we can make green. I'll show you how to do that. Um, but very first thing that we're going to start with is the background. So if you don't have green, mix your blue and your yellow to make green and then add a ton of white to it to really lighten up that background. If you want to do that green background, you're welcome. If you want to do blue, if you want to do whatever other color you would like, feel free to do that. Uh, but that's our very first goal. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and as people are coming on, um, hopefully they'll see what's going on and uh you know if anybody's joining in on this the background is the first thing we let it dry and then uh after that we start adding the details of of mr raccoon here mr tom nook um anybody who's a fan of animal crossing i'm excited to do this and hopefully um you'll want to you want to paint tom nook thinking about doing isabel uh saturday and I'm thinking about in the future possibly showing how to do uh, whatever character that you customized yourself. Um, and this video is turned, or the phone is, is away from me, so I can't see any comments or anything right now. Uh, so I'll see questions and everything at the end and I'll answer accordingly. Um, but if you do this, I want to see it. If you do your own um, thing, that's cool too. I want to see that as well. Uh, one thing that I would definitely recommend when I'm showing step by step, um, I've noticed a lot of people have run into um, run into issues sometimes with kind of just jumping ahead, and others have just jumped ahead and done really well. So um, I guess discern for yourself, you know, which is the better idea, <laughs> and um, we'll go from there. But. Uh, Tom Nook, I figured not everybody's going to do the tiger this week, so I still wanted to have a few other options available. Um, so there's there will be this one today. Tomorrow I'm going to have a scenery um, after the, the foundational step with the tiger. And then uh, the, next, the next one will probably be Thursday. And um, it's going to be a tree frog. I haven't gotten that one up to, to show yet, but super excited about it the tree frog has so many colors and I'm gonna be delving into another um, kind of kind of a switch up from some other things that I've shown so it'll be a new technique kind of sort of just kind of flipping it around I'm super excited about that uh, but let's go ahead and start putting on this background here I'm just gonna mix my green with my white 
to make this really light background color. Um, I did two coats on the example that you see. So you can uh, let it dry and do a second coat if you like. I'm just going to do one coat today showing this video. So I'm not taking up too much time. Um, but this is one of those methods where I just I mix my white with my green to completion of a color. Make sure I like that color and then apply it accordingly. So side to side or up and down the whole way. It's totally up to you. Just choose one of those two directions and use it the entire way through your canvas. Later on when this dries, um, you'll either want to have a pencil handy or follow the same techniques I show with a brush on how to put Tom Nook on this canvas. Not too crazy. He's got some really simple large shapes, so um, I really couldn't see anybody having any difficulty with it. But if you do, I'm always here to help if you need. Just let me know. We're just going to spread this green. Keep it as flat as possible. We don't want any glops. If you have any glops on your canvas, just keep pressing them in with the brush by just stroking them as I'm doing. And flatten it all out. We want it to dry in a timely manner. And we also don't want glops to take over uh, Tom Nook later because I'm sure he wants to, doesn't want to be that green. So again, if you don't already have green and you have yellow and blue, mix the blue and the yellow. More yellow than blue will keep it light, or brighter I should say. And when you add a lot of white to it, it lightens it up. To a nice, almost minty, minty fresh color. Which is kind of what I saw being for um, Animal Crossing and also Tom Nook. Uh, a lot of his designs have, have that green leaf. I thought the background might sig might be a nice um, signification for if that's even a word I'm not sure, but it'll symbolize that you know he's he's got his environment the way he likes it. It also helps him stand out pretty well. I have to say, this was a really fun painting, um, as simple as it might seem uh, that Animal, Cro Animal Crossing is, uh, their artwork is actually, um, I don't want to say challenging, but it's it's got a lot more to it than you would think. It's not just really shapes, there's also shades, um, there's a lot of really nice design that they put work into displaying what you can have on Animal Crossing. So we're just putting down our background. This video will be up on YouTube as well later on. If anybody knows anyone else who doesn't do Facebook, um, doesn't have any account, you don't need one. You just go to YouTube, pull up the Party Art page, and there will be a list of videos that you can check out. And um, pretty much all of my previous videos, live streams, have gone up there. This one's going to go up there. Um, if you are not following my Lion stream, that'll be up there. Um, for anybody who you might think is interested in that, or not my lion, my tiger, I'm sorry. I haven't done a lion yet.
I didn't use my large brush for uh, this this background, but you can if you'd like to. I like working with smaller brushes on smaller canvases. Um, it helps to bring out the details a little bit better. To me, I guess uh, an example would be I wouldn't put, you know, an entire kitchen in a cubby hole. And that's kind of how I see brushes and canvases. You know, I if they're smaller, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something smaller. So I'll use a smaller tool, especially when you have to go smaller in detail. And it also it keeps you it um. It helps you stay smaller when you use smaller brushes not just because you have a smaller brush but also in your mindset your mindset is oh this is a small brush it gives you more room to work with in your in your mind as opposed to having a large brush kind of takes up that space and it puts you almost in a box so I like to switch switch brushes accordingly all the time even on my large canvases, I'll go down to a smaller brush to give my thought process some more room to maneuver. That's just how I function. anybody has suggestions of the Animal Crossing world, something you'd like to paint that's from that world, please let me know. Uh, I'd love to do more of these and show how to do them. You have a certain character you like or you have a character you want to do um, anything anything at all just let me know <laughs> let me make sure I have my edges all done while I'm letting this dry a little bit So you can kind of see all these little lines that are happening of different uh, greens. Um, that's actually what ended up with me doing a second coat for the background. If you don't like those, let it dry, do a second coat, let that dry, and then do the steps after that. If you want to do three coats, you can also do three coats of the background. Um, I kind of like just sticking with the two, but that's me. That's my preference. So whatever your preference is, go with that. I'm going to let this dry a little bit before um, going into this, but I'll start to describe here how I reach the different levels of brown. Um, on my palette, I have the white, the blue, the yellow, the red, the brown, the black. Um, if you don't have brown, what you can do is you can take red and green, and you can darken on your plate. That makes some browns. You can take red and yellow and a little bit of the green to make different versions of the brown um, you can almost take red and a little pinch of black and yellow will make brown um, kind of toy around with with how you want to reach brown once you have a brown all that I stick with are yellows and whites and blacks or blues depending to darken it um, which I'll show as we go along. But if you want to start mixing a brown, I would say go ahead and start seeing what kind of brown you like. You could do a lot of red, a little bit of black. You can do, like I said, the red, yellow, a little bit of black, red, green. Um, try out each one and see what you like. Um, stick more on the red, because red, I say red is the most related to the brown other than a little bit of, um, well no I wouldn't, yeah, red. Red is pretty much the most close 
closest relative here in my mind to the brown. So more red, um, make something you like. I actually have a bottle of brown that I added here and I'm going to be um, working with that and showing if anybody has brown, show you how to work with that brown as well. I would mix that. I would also mix a color for the sweater that he's wearing. Um, I took more blue than yellow to make kind of that tealish greenish color. If you like just a dark green, more blue than yellow. Um, we'll take it down to the teal, but um, kind of an even balance of the blue and the yellow will take it to dark green. So uh, see what you like. More yellow is going to light, uh, brighten it a lot, brighten uh, to a bright green. And white is always going to soften it and lighten it up. Um, so, you know, unless you're trying to get this background, I really didn't use any other light green in here. Not too much. Maybe in a couple of spots, like on his uh, pocket, under his neck, under his chin. There's a little kind of pocket area there. There's a lighter version of um, that dark teal I made. I just add a little bit of white and put that on there. But other than that, there's not really any anything like this in the rest of the piece. So we want to make sure it's different from the background. Um, let's see, for the Bell's bag, um, which is that little bag he's holding with the star on it. Uh, definitely want the red. What I did was I, I mixed the yellow and the brown and the white to lighten it up to almost that um, soft golden color. You can kind of uh, manipulate that to your liking. It doesn't have to be that exact color. Uh, just something that's real lighter than he is for sure. Lighter, lighter than his fur, um, but feel free to be a little more free with your painting. Um, don't don't feel like you have to do every step the exact same way. So you'll find colors that you know stick out to you that um, you know make this what what you see in Tom Nook and in the game and in the animal. You know this is supposed to be a representation of what you take from of your Animal Crossing experience. <laughs> so. Gonna let this dry a little bit longer. It might take a few few minutes here. Um, but yeah, start start mixing your colors. If you have questions in mixing, please let me know. I will do my best. I also have, um, like I said, this phone is facing a different direction, so I can't really see the screen. Um, but I want to make sure everybody sees the, the correct direction that he is facing. Sadly, my phone is not up to par with that. <laughs> At the same time, um, make sure you get your, your coffee or whatever kind of thing you would like to have while we're doing this. That way we're not just sitting here. <laughs> Uh, another way that I like to quick dry is I'll fan it with another plate that I have here. You can actually take a um, hair blow dryer and blow dry it. This will also give time for people who are doing this to do your background and get it finished up. Everybody, uh, once you paint so much, you just kind of fly through certain certain parts. Or I do anyway, I don't know. But um, no rush on anybody. Take your time. Do your thing. This is your you time. Maybe painting. Maybe it's some family time. Maybe some, some people are doing this together.
I always save the bottom edge for later. If you've watched my previous videos, um, you've heard. If you've not, and this is the first one, I wouldn't do it until the very end because the bottom of the canvas will stick to the easel. And you don't want to damage either of them. You're getting there slowly but surely. In the meantime, I'm going to give you guys a snippet also of what's coming up. Um, let me grab tomorrow's After Tiger video. going to be the scenery here. Let me see if I can get this in the frame. Oops. Can't get the whole thing in the frame, but um, this is on a 16 by 20. I'm going to be showing how to do these trees, how to do this background, this foreground. Really simple techniques. Did not take much at all. Um, less was definitely a lot more so if anybody know is interested in this I would um, honestly say that I would recommend this for any age um, and Anybody anybody who wants to try it out um, I think it, it hangs nicely on a wall. It's very uh, Very mellow very dark, but um, has its own way that it sticks out so that's gonna be tomorrow after the second step with the tiger um, and then this isn't done just yet I'm gonna wear finish this today actually but we're gonna do a tree frog on Thursday after uh, the crown video but um, the frog is gonna be on this leaf here I'm not done with the leaf uh, but this will be a cool one it'll be kind of a switch up of another technique I showed and um, it'll it'll be a nice kind of it'll be a nice switch some people don't um, have maybe the surroundings for the opposite so I'm gonna show you how to do the opposite of that and make it work um, I'm super excited about that I can't wait to get the frog up uh, it'll be done today and I'll have it up there tonight, but um, that'll be fun. And anybody has any recommendations? Anybody has any ideas to throw at me of what what you like to see, what you like to do, uh, whichever you know. Even if you don't want to paint it and you just want to see it painted, uh, let me know. Um, and then if anybody's doing these paintings. I want to see them um, definitely show me in the comments or in the messages and if anybody knows anybody on YouTube uh, who is not on Facebook um, you know let them know these videos are gonna be up there if they would like to see them I know a few people who do not do Facebook and I don't blame them um, but I also want to give them the ability to see these Alright, so we're almost, almost dry enough getting there. Sometimes you can either see the shine on it or I still see the shine. Not too much longer though.
that. So I'm going to start mixing my brown for Mr. Tom Nook's head. I'm going to take my brown and my yellow and start with that. Also a little bit of white. So white, brown, yellow. More on the yellow and the brown than the white. The white's going to help thicken this up so it's not so see through on the canvas. Any of these next steps that I show you, you can do two to three coats if you'd like. Um, Depending on the style you're going for, depending on how you like to portray your character, totally up to you. Yep, it is ready. So let's start with this head. And the shape is going to be very important, very, very vital to, to this. Um, first, we're going to think smaller. I don't want to take up this entire canvas with this head unless I'm just doing a portrait. Uh, which, you know, if that's what you're doing, that's fine. So you can think in those regards if you'd like. Uh, if you want to stick with what I'm doing, I'm actually going to take a lot of the space away to make my mind understand we're not just filling all of this canvas with a head. <laughs> so I'm going to start with just a round, kind of an upside down smile. From there, I'm just going to come in. Same thing on the other side. And go ahead, and we're going to fill that in. Down here, if you want to add just a little swoop, it's going to show that it's a little bit rounded down here. As I'm adding, I'm just adding brown and yellow to that mixture I made just to make it a little bit more solid. And feel free, if you went smaller than this, um, it is going to be smaller according to that over there. That's fine. It does not need to be this large. But it can be. I mean, there's different versions of him. And his head is kind of, it's kind of large. If you see your green is showing through and you're just kind of tearing the paint off of the canvas, let it dry um, after you put it down. Come back to it later on. See, it's already happening to me here. That's okay, we're just going to let that dry and put a second coat over it a little bit after. But now, that leaves um, room for us to go up to his ears. I'm going to switch down to a smaller brush for that. Yesterday, when I was doing this, I did not switch down to a smaller brush for this. But I definitely recommend it. <laughs> just to make it easier for yourself. It doesn't have to be super small. It could be either of these sizes here. Um, I might stick with this larger one. If you're comfortable with smaller, go smaller. And I'm just going to dip into the brown, put it into that mixture. It's going to be a little bit darker up here because the ears are behind the head. I'm going to bring up, it comes out to this angle and then it just swoops around. Same thing over here. It comes out to this angle and it swoops around circular swoop. Um, and I don't really fill that in in here. We're going to do the pink inside there. So if you want to just kind of hit the ear again to bring it thicker, you can. Up here we're going to go darker. I really wouldn't worry about that right now. Right now I'm just worried about these sides of the ear. Make 
sure you got your shape the way you want it. There you go. Hopefully I haven't lost anybody. If you're doing this, um, definitely if you would like to practice this first, I should have said that before. Um, but you can practice on a plate, you can practice on, um, I don't know, I had a, kind of a cardboard gift box that I practiced the butterfly on before I just painted it out right. Um, you can do that. As long as you um, are allowed, or, you know, if you're, if you're younger and, and, you know, it's not your shoebox, definitely ask. <laughs> but if it's your shoebox and you don't care, go ahead, go for it. Um, but yeah, sometimes I'll practice these out painting-wise beforehand and then go on the canvas and do them. Always a good idea if you're not sure. But let's go ahead and mix his uh, shirt color. I'm gonna take, like I was saying earlier, more blue than yellow if you're gonna go teal. But if you want it to be just dark green, that's also all right. Mix the green that sticks out to you when you think Tom Nook. And I know he's got a new shirt on um, New Horizons. If you like that shirt and you know you feel confident to do that one, feel free to do that. Uh, I mix my green, and I'm actually gonna just put down his his sweater vest here. It's gonna come out here. Definitely, body's gonna be smaller than the head. I'm just gonna fill that in. I'm going side to side. You can go up and down. It's really up to you how you like to fill it in. Um, I say fill it in and then pick a direction and just take the paint, all of it, just that direction. And I'll show you, once I have this down, what I mean by that. Sometimes you need a scrub brush because the canvas is just too dry and your paintbrush is too dry. And Scrub brush is gonna actually even out, um, flatten out all the painting on there. Just gonna fill in those spaces. I just come back in with my one direction. I'm gonna do something real fast here under his chin. I know that he has an opening to his shirt. So right under here, I'm gonna throw some brown in just a triangular shape. And it's all right that it's darker, as it is darker under there. Later on, I'm gonna show you how to shade a lot of these areas to make them not so flat. We don't really want it to be flat as it's gonna look. So I've got some techniques that I'm going to give you for your utility belt of painting. So we don't want to just leave the shirt where it is right now. We're actually going to kind of bring it down and sweep this kind of out and then around like that. Good, very good. From there, we go 
are going to do this bottom half here. Um, there's different variations. You can do, he has dark gray pants. Um, I decided to do a dark, dark, dark brown um, instead. But whatever you would like there, feel free. I think this time I will do this dark gray. So mixing white with black, more white than black because black goes a long way. And I'm just gonna make a half circle under here. Fill that in. Don't worry if you go over that line by accident. You can always put it back, no problem. And we're gonna put his little pant legs down here. Kind of like little <coughs> boxes that curve with every direction that they touch. And here I would go with a smaller brush and I'm going to use black. Uh, you can use dark brown if you want. You can add just a pinch of black to the dark, to the brown if you like, or some blue depending on your preference. I'm gonna make his, his feet here. They're gonna trail off the canvas a little, but I'm okay with that. And we're getting through this Tom Nook. Alright, so I've got some things drying, waiting for their next code or their next uh, step that's going to happen. Maybe uh, we'll take a trip over here to his tail. I'm just going to dip right into my regular brown. And it pretty much happened here between the pants and the sweater just comes to a nice almost starts out like a like an oval but it comes out outward almost like an air balloon to this tail shape here we'll fill that in later on we're gonna add the dark brown to this Alright, so we're allowing these areas to dry real fast, um, if you want, you can even take your plate, kind of speed dry them a little bit, it's not so speedy, but it's a little bit faster, if you like, if not, we can take a trip up to the ears, fill them in with the pink, so I'm going to take my white and a little pinch of red to make a nice pink. And then just go ahead and fill this inside here. Now, if you like the base coat with white first, you can also do that. And then let that dry and do pink. Um, honestly, you could base coat the entire being here. This entire character, you could base coat if you like and let it dry and then go over top of that. If you like to. Um, that's also very doable. Also, it will make them, it'll make Tom Nook stick out even more from the canvas. I did base coat the 
the example there. <clears throat> but so I'm not taking too much time on this video. I'm not trying to make it a three hour video. <laughs> So fill in both both of these ears with the pink whatever size brush you're comfortable with doing that smaller larger whichever and now we are ready to throw in these bells real fast. Um, this is kind of just going from thing to thing, preparing for the next level of it. That very first brown we mixed, I'm gonna throw white into, lighten it up a bit, maybe some yellow to lighten it up even more to make a golden kind of color. I'll show you what's on my plate here. So this one right here. You can lighten it up more if you'd like. Whatever you see the bells being, the bag, um, that's what we're going to use. It's a pretty large bag, so it can start, you know, roughly around here, circle around. It's going to go behind, behind his head there. It's going to go onto his sweater a little bit, so it's a pretty large bag. You get green on your brush, dry it off, or rinse it out, dry it off, go back into this color, and throw it onto the bag. I'm going to show you two different ways of the top of the bag here where the opening is um, after it's tied. Not everybody will want to do every detail of it, so there's a couple ways to escape that, and I will show you how to do that in just a moment. But I'm not really concerned with getting the exact same golden color each time. I just want along the same lines. But keep that, keep the strokes circular on it. Keep going around and around. We don't want it to just be a circle on a canvas, we want it to show some value of, you know, being full, being full of bells. And if you want to base coat this before you paint it in, every part of this uh, piece you can do that if you want to do multiple coats. This is definitely the type of painting you can do that with. What I like about this is um, it can look like a painting as opposed to looking exactly like, you know, we're playing the game. Um, because that's kind of how Animal Crossing is. There's there's paintings on, on Animal Crossing and they're so even though they seem so simple and it's, you know, pixels that are put together, um, they, they seem so decorative and, and, uh, intricate. None the, nonetheless at all, so you can kind of make that kind of painting, I guess, so to speak, with your Animal Crossing character when you're hanging on your wall, you know, it looks like, looks like something fancy in the game. <laughs> So let's approach the top here. If you don't want to show the open mouth, all you have to do is just throw it the other way. Still needs to be pretty decently large. Um, you know, it's going to come but it's going to be facing the other direction, so you're not even going to see the mouth opening 
of the bills of, of the pouch. So you want to make sure that this is rounded off over top. So you know, if you accidentally hit that line, come back over top here, put it right back in. If you do want to have the open mouth, um, let's say that you don't, you didn't want to, don't do the next steps if you want to leave it the other direction where you're not seeing that. But if you want to see the opening, follow these next steps. All that you do is you come to the edge and you're going to make a white line where the opening is and it's going to follow until we get here to this point so we make sure that's seeable this point right here it's almost going to look like a backwards um, question mark ish when you get to that point it's going to bow down and it's going to come back up and it's going to just follow all the way around to that line it's gonna look very strange gonna feel very strange almost looks like a heart right now that's kind of crooked in some areas um, it doesn't need to be that whatever that you come up with you know as long as you leave some spots that are not hit with that white line you're pretty much good going on the inside we're gonna take a little bit of brown a little bit of black darken it up darkest area we're gonna come inside of that white line right on the edge of it and we're gonna darken it in there and bring it out as it's coming um, outward add some brown to your gold just to make it uh, even darker gold you can add a little pinch of black if you like just need a dark dark gold color we're going to fill in the rest of this inside of the pouch with that gold. So it's like a dark brown, a dark gold, something like that. But we don't necessarily want to leave that division line in there. We want it to gradient outward. So carry, carry some of that outward. Dry off the brush if you need. Just on the towel, just dry it right off. Don't rinse it or anything. And just continue to push push these colors blend them blend them together a little bit if you need to add black to make it the darkest point back here feel free to do that that is totally fine so it's going to go from dark to light And we're starting to see the inside of the lip of that uh, the bell bag. <laughs> we're gonna let that dry a little bit. Let's come back up to. Let me think. I might let might have to let it dry a little bit longer. Paint over top of paint. It's like paint on plastic and it takes a while to actually dry. But so far I hope everybody's feeling good on this painting. I hope it's not too complicated. Um, you know, if there's any steps that you'd rather skip and just want to keep it simple, feel free to do that. If you want to just stick with one color, one tone, that's fine. If you want to keep it at two, that's fine. If you want to just blend things together, that's fine. If you just want to do half of them or just the head, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty tacky, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit. If anybody's uh, painting this along with me, I'm going to give you some time catch up if you're behind well I don't want to say behind if you're you know if you're if you're in a certain area just honing in on it you know take your time I'll give you some time to do that
I found this pumpkin sparkling cider at Aldi's and it was very, very good. I would recommend it if you like pumpkin flavored things. Um, never thought I'd find it, but it popped up and I was like, oh, I'll try that. And I like it. <laughs> Is there anywhere? Not really anywhere that's not drying right now. Everything's pretty much very wet. If you like the shadow that's beneath his feet there, let me show you how to do that real fast. Um, take a small brush. Take the same color that you used on his shirt, that, that mixture of blue and yellow, or the darker green. And we're just gonna dry brush it around his feet underneath of him down here kind of around here definitely over to his tail his tail is low enough that it's going to show a bit of shadow as well so and the bag of bells that's honestly as simple as it honestly is um if you want to take some water can even thin it out a little bit so it's not all just heavy Yeah, this painting's gonna have a lot of a lot of time drying. Definitely if you don't double coat the anything else, I would definitely double coat anything that's white. So um his his sleeve and his eyes where they are white, I would double coat those make sure that white sticks out sometimes it, it takes three three coats maybe four depends on the type of paint you're using mine's pretty thin so probably take accurately three but i'm only gonna do probably two um maybe we can oops put those down real fast pretty sure it's yeah it's pretty dry except for there not dry there. It's pretty dry on his face where that we can put his eyes. So let's do that real fast. Um, I'm going to come down pretty much in line with his ear kind of diagonally and make an egg shape. It's almost like a an ovaly circle. Fill that in. If you don't want to do this step yet and you want to uh, let the rest of the face dry and then do another coat of the face, feel free to do that. Same thing over here. It's going to look odd. It's going to feel odd. That's okay. There's more things we're going to have to add to these eyes. If you can tell right there, it wasn't completely dry, but dry enough. Alright. So we got the base coat in. If we have to tweak anything here, we definitely can later on. Um, because we have the dark mask that's going to come around and it'll shape up some stuff. I might add a little bit down here just to make room for his nose, a little bit more room. You'll see why later um, if you want to do that step as well. 
why that's going to work out. There's there's some dimension that, that happens here that we need that for. Alright. Um, I feel like we can put his mask in if we just... Maybe we'll coat one more time around its face real fast. We'll see if we can add the mask. Let's see, but the brown yellow mixture again. A little bit of white if you want to keep it thick. And I'm gonna go over top of this first layer that was put down. Going around this shape is very important. doesn't really matter right in there per se but get around there all right that's as much as I'm gonna do there let's make a dark dark brown whatever dark version of brown that you would like to make for for the mask here so I add a little bit of black to the brown and it stays pretty close to the edge of the face here. So we're going to bring it around and we're going to bring it around. Up top, it just stays pretty much not straight straight across, but just at that angle going straight across. And then it's going to follow the direction of these eyes here gonna come up here it's gonna come back down and around and we fill that in around the eyes If you end up with too much on one side, I'm going to come back in with this bright color that we used for, for the cheeks there. Just kind of fade it out a little bit. little bit of that dry brush technique, scrubbing it in, scrubbing it out. And again, if there's too much of that white showing under here, you can always just adjust it. Make it a little bit smaller. that dry a little and come back to it later to adjust more you always can do that um, but I'm gonna set in kind of a little bit of a map a paint map of, of what's gonna what's to come I'm gonna take some of this brown just regular brown and put his eyelids they're slanted at the top of the eye just fill that in Same thing on the other side.
gonna bring some weight in here again. to round off that, that shape for the eye. And I'm gonna let that dry for a little while. So let's hit this nose area real fast. Make sure we've got everything where we need it. Got kind of a, a large nose shape. That right there, that'll work. Um, there's an area up here that goes lighter. So I'm gonna actually take some white and some brown. And right above his nose, we're gonna do this shape here it's almost like it just it curves the top of the nose it goes lighter and we leave that in there Well enough that we can put on the beginning of the base of the sleeve and it pretty much just comes from up here and it covers the back just a little bit so there's a bend in his elbow Just a slight bend. And we're gonna take it in a backwards C. Fill that in. you take your brush long from end to end it'll keep those nice flattened lines in there remember it's just the base so I don't need it to be solid white right now it just needs to be there if you like you can go ahead and slightly finish that C right there that backward C And if you want to add that part of the sleeve right here, just put a line. It doesn't need to be straight. Um, it definitely should be curved. Curve that line to go around his arm. And if you want, you can put that top paw in here. It's not going to go to the very end, it's going to stop a little early. So we can make our adjustments right after that, we can throw this here. If you want, you can do a second layer here to the pants. If you want to, you know, challenge yourself a little further, you can darken, make a darker gray here, and see where there's any spots that are underneath any other spots, and just darken those areas under his shirt and darken to show that his shirt is over top of the pants definitely blend that out into the pants 
if you need to go darker. Sometimes it's a process, that's fine. If you want to go black, that's fine. It starts to get you thinking in the direction of shading and making things stick out the way they should. We can actually start decorating, you know, the bottom of his shirt here a little bit. Um, if you even want to do another coat of the green, you can do that. Which I might do here real fast, just to make it solid. A little bit more solid. And under his sleeve, again, if you want to challenge yourself, we're going to go darker down there. So I'm going to add, so everyone can see this, a little bit of black to my dark green. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue, a little bit of black. And right under the sleeve here is where that's going to be, it's going to start. I'm going to bring his arm out. If you want to leave that line as it is, you can. If you want to come back with a dry brush, which I rinsed and dried this brush, and just kind of sweep underneath the edge of that line you can. Anywhere else that you feel like you want to add these details, you can. Think about what's underneath of what else. Maybe back here on his tail. Since it's so close to his shirt, you can go darker there. I almost forgot that we need to darken the edge of the tail here too. So, dark brown. Let it blend out. If you want to come back in with the light brown, to thin it out some more, feel free. Same thing on the tops of the ears here. They come out and then they get dark on top. a spot on the mask here that I want to adjust with the eyelid. The eyelid and the eye itself should pretty much match. There shouldn't be anything further out. Clean that up real good. If you want to hit that pink again, it should be dry enough. Some of these places all need more than one, more than one coat. You can even go darker pink around where you think it would be shading, which is underneath the edges of the ear. You can add designs to his shirt if you like. He's got, um, we're going to go even darker green. Uh, well, not necessarily. We're going to go above the shadow of the green, but still darker than his shirt. 
trying to add some some lines on on here. Every other spot there. Um, add a little bit of white to that. And he's got he's got this kind of diamondy shape thing going on. So we're gonna do some upward arrows going up. And they're all gonna connect. There's another one. There's another one. It's like a zigzag. There's another one. We're gonna do white and yellow. Add the white to the yellow so that it's seeable on the shirt. If you just added the yellow, it's kind of hard to see. But we're going to fill in the diamond on two of these, both on the far ends. Now we're going to take that dark green we just had and go right underneath those two diamonds. Might be hard to see. I'm going to go darker, but go as dark as you like. Alright. If you want to add another level of those arrows, you can. Now let's hit this bag again. We'll let everything over here simmer for a little bit. We're going to hit this bag. Um, if you want to start out, you can coat the bag again. Totally up to you. If you don't want to coat it, you don't have to. For starters, I want to take a darker color than the bag. I would go almost like a the brown of his fur up here. Kind of put a shadow of his arm around here. Again, dry the brush. If you get that dry brush and maybe smooth this out a little bit. Now we're going to throw the star on, so dark brown, whatever version of dark brown you like. I'm not really paying attention to the mixture other than it's dark brown. And right on here, I'm going to start with a triangle. I have always had issues drawing stars out. But I found a method where I can do triangles. If you want to draw with a pencil beforehand, you can do that. But I'm going to go straight out and straight out. Bring another triangle down. Another triangle. Fill these in. down another triangle here, another triangle over here, and then just tighten it up. Alright, I'm going to hit this area under the bag up here. Maybe back here as well. And now we're going to do the, the drawstring. The, the string that's tying the bag. Holding it where it is. I'm going to take my red on a smaller brush. And I'm going to round it. Always round. Always when things are going wrapped around something. You want to do it like it's a ring. Ring around it. This is going to be a cool method that 
that is going to be shown. So um, it's almost like the instrument of the triangle when you're putting the loops on. So it comes out like a triangle. And then it forms this edge right there and it connects. And there are actually two of those. Over there, same thing. It's going to come off of the bag a little bit. That's fine. And then you just pick one of these edges here and you bring the rest of the other string down. Probably the same thing over here is let it let it fall down. If you want to take this all the way in, you can do that. But the shading is what brings all of this out here. So I'm going to take that dark brown that we've been working with, the same one that's that's of the star. And on this side of each line, I'm just going to put a dark line. Right there and right there. And keep this simple. Same thing over here. It's going to stay on this side. Same thing over here. It's going to stay on that side. Same thing on the inside of this here. It's going to stay over on that side and underneath. It's going to bring it out a bit. And that's pretty much the drawstring. The other thing that I did was I took a little bit of white and I just hit some of, some of the string itself with that white to make it look a little more dimensional. Totally optional, you don't have to do that if you don't like. But if you would like, it's just real simple, very light, light um, additions. Take your time with it. Alright, so let's hit his eyes one more time with the white. I don't really need to do the center area. I really just want the edges to stand out with the white. They're pretty much going to be the area that that does. And if you want to start throwing the blue in, I just took regular blue. And I left the space on the sides. It's almost like a uh, horseshoe, I guess, is of, of the white is going around the blue. Same thing on the other side here. Leave some space. Keep it pretty even on both sides with the white. really coming together. So any places on here that you want to take further and you want to um, make them look accurate, always take your time. You can do that. I'm going to add a little shadow down here. Dry off the brush. Brush it in scrub brushing if you want to take shadows further the edge up here is going to be the darkest because it's the closest to whatever is under and then as it comes out it's going to get lighter this is a good practice for, for shading you 
want to throw the space in there a little bit more. Definitely can do that. We get to your liking. Let the um, let certain areas dry before you just keep hitting them, and hitting them. And take the face down a little bit, back to where it was. A little bit of brown in that mixture. But make sure sure to have fun. Don't overthink this piece. Just have fun. If you need a picture of Tom Nook right in front of you, based on the version that you're doing, you can do that way as well. Paint what you see. And that is pretty much Mr. Tom Nook, um, one more area I can think of to do just the dark shadow is on the left side of his collar there. Just to bring that out. Right under his chin. And once you feel complete, Got your edges all done, got everything done. Take whatever color you like and sign your piece. Bottom right hand corner, initials, or whatever kind of signature that you like, that you have. And I hope that you enjoyed the video. Um, oh, wait, we have one more, one more spot. You have to coat that arm one more time. I almost left. Didn't want to do that. Alright, so. Coat that sleeve. Mine's still a little bit wet yet. But you definitely want to get this pretty bright. Bright white. I don't think there's anything else that I missed to do. But yeah. I hope this was fun. Um, it'll be up on YouTube like I said earlier. If anybody doesn't Facebook, they can YouTube it. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, but other than that, thank you so much. And I'll be back tomorrow with more. Um, doing a tiger and doing a scenery. Alright, thank you so much. And I'll see you later.